Hi, in this video we want to talk about Podman Desktop on Mac OS. So Podman Desktop is a software, a piece of software that allows you to work with containers, uh, more specifically with Linux containers on Mac OS. So uh, it can replace Docker Desktop. So if you previously used Docker Desktop, you can now switch to Podman Desktop and do the same things that you did with Docker Desktop and even more. Because uh, Podman Desktop has some features and capabilities that Docker Desktop doesn't have. So first of all, let's check out the different parts of this application. First, you see the dashboard that shows the home page for this application that shows the, some of the credits uh, some of the, the version uh, links to different parts of the website like the Podman desktop installation guide and the Podman community. And then we have a part for containers that shows containers whether they are running or uh, not running. We have a section for pods that is specific to pod to Podman and is not available in Docker because Docker does not support pods. Pods are units of execution uh, that uh, are used a lot in Kubernetes and in fact the, uh, the, the lowest unit of execution in Kubernetes is pod, a pod. Then we have images that shows the list of images that you have for different uh, containers. These are the container images we have on our system. We have volumes. These are the volumes, the storage volumes that our, container, our containers use. And currently this list is empty showing that we don't have a volume on our, uh, on our system. We have a section for extensions. These uh, extend the capabilities of Podman Desktop that allows you to have more features than the basic installation of Podman Desktop. So for example, by installing the OpenShift extension, you will be able to work with OpenShift clusters and deploy your applications to OpenShift clusters. There are other extensions that you can install them from Docker the, from uh, Docker extension store uh, or from some other sources and these are uh, sometimes very nice to work with and they really extend your capabilities in terms of working with containers. And then we have settings. These are some various con container related settings some settings about the UI, working with the UI, like the font size, line height, and others. And telemetry for uh, sending telemetry to Podman desktop team for fixing the application bugs and things like that, improving the quality. Then we have resources showing the number of Podman machines that are running on our system. Currently, we have only one Podman machine running because this is the way uh, Podman, uh, uh, Podman Desktop and Docker Desktop work by creating a virtual machine. So here we have only one virtual machine that is taking uh, uh, about uh, it is in its size is 107 gigabytes and it uses 2.15 gigabytes of memory. The disk size of 107 gigabytes does not mean it is currently using it, but uh, I suppose this is the maximum uh, uh, storage size that this volume can, uh, this uh, virtual machine can allocate on the system. And then we have proxy in, uh, in case you need a proxy to connect to uh, Docker repositories or other repositories uh, for container repositories. You can configure that here. We have registers, uh, registries. Here you define registries uh, that contain your container images. We have currently one, uh, we have uh, by default four registries defined Docker Hub, Red Hat QA, 
or Qui, I guess. We have GitHub and Google Container Registry. And then we have extensions. These are uh, extensions that are currently installed. And as you can see, the versions is also, the version numbers are visible. For example, the Compose extension allows you to run Compose-based projects in case your uh, project uses a Docker Compose file for running the containers and uh, stopping them to manage the project, you can use this extension. And then we have desktop extensions. Here you can install uh, other desktop extensions. I currently have only one extension installed which is OpenShift, but you can add other extensions from Docker Extension Store. And the format to use is by specifying the vendor and then the name of the extension, and then the tag, as you can see here. And the, there are some other preferences that I showed you earlier, and these were just some general descriptions of this application. If you look at the status bar, we see Compose that you can use to enable. If you click it, you will it will enable Compose. Uh, it means that uh, the tick here after clicking it shows that Compose is now enabled and you can run Compose-based projects. So for example, let me go to my SRC directory and then Playground and here let me go to WordPress Compose Sample, WP Compose Sample, and I can simply run Docker Compose up. Note that in order for this to work, you need to make sure that you have installed Docker Compose application uh, using brew install Docker Compose because Docker Compose, as far as I know, is not automatically installed by Podman Desktop. So you have to install it manually yourself because it's a separate application anyways. So as you can see, our project is up and running using Docker Compose. It, has a, it is a WordPress website. It consists of two or three containers, one for the website and one for the uh, database. And if I open my browser, we can uh, go to that website and uh, localhost 8080, open it. There we go. You can see that it is ready for installation the WordPress site username my name and then password some password some password what am I doing? Confirm use of big password and install WordPress. Okay, I didn't specify an email address. Test at signtest.com. This is a valid email address. And confirm use of big password. And that's it. Our website is now running. Now our website has been configured and we can go to its homepage by opening localhost 8080. There we go. So that's it for Docker Compose, part of the Podman desktop. And now if you want to ask about pods, we can also work with pods in Podman desktop, for example. Uh, uh, as you might know, a pod is a group of containers. It can contain one or more containers. So let me uh, start a pod. First, create a pod. Podman 
pod create and I specify a name for it this is the way to create it uh, on, in the terminal but you can also create it in podman desktop so my pod is now visible here my pod I can also create it here I guess no seems like I cannot create a pod here I can only see them here so let's add some containers to this pod so podman run uh, name web1 and let's use an nginx image and specify the name of the pod my pod means that I want this container to be placed inside the pod my pod so I put it here and <clears throat> then I specify the image some port mapping I don't need a port mapping here I don't want to browse to the website just uh, create the containers so docker.io library nginx latest what happened web1 okay web1 is already taken let's use wv1 and now there we go the container was started and it's running inside my pod uh, I could have uh, done this another way the pod is not running because I stopped it let me remove the container first podman rm web1 and let's now specify dash d to run it in the background and let's create another container within by the name of wb2 and put it also inside my pod so now i will have two containers running in my pod if i open it i should be able to see them there we go wb1 and wb2 and i don't know why it has exited anyway you can see that our pod is <clears throat> uh, showing two containers and one container that is the default container that cannot be removed this is the container that does some administrative jobs inside the pod and manages the pod itself uh, and here we go we can open up the pod and see its contain contents and the number of containers that are running you can also click each one of these uh, containers to see their logs as they are running and that's it so that's it for podman desktop on mac os i hope that you liked it uh, before i go let me point to how you can install it on your mac so Podman Desktop IO is the website you need to go and find the latest version of Podman Desktop to install on your system. It is cross-platform application, meaning that it is available on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. So each one of these, uh, no matter which one of these operating systems you are using, you can use Podman Desktop to work with Linux containers, and it's awesome. This is a very nice application that has been in development for more than one year as far as I know and it is uh, now in a stable version meaning that it is over version 1 and you can use it uh, with peace of mind and work with applications, work with containerized application, containerize your applications and so on and so forth. And as you can see, even work with Kubernetes. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.